Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice to see you. My name is Dustin Cormier, and welcome to How to Rock Astrology. Today is another episode in our Venus Moon Sign series. Today in particular, we're going to be talking about Libra Moon with Venus in Taurus. Uh, it's interesting that these are both Venus signs. There's a little bit of a positive resonance there. Uh, although ultimately there are difficulties with this sign combination as we're going to talk about. Uh, the eighth aspect between the moon tends to be a heavy aspect. Uh, the eighth house has a sense of chaos, which can be for good or bad. If these planets were friendly to each other, it would be a good thing. But this chaos is exacerbated in a way, uh, which just hurts Venus in particular more than anything. Uh, with any type of aspect, as we're going to talk about, the aspects are mostly painful because this is so close to like the opposition. There's still a oppositional energy here. Um, and the aspect of these two are going to damage Venus because the moon is primary. And the moon will always lend its instinctive emotional need energy in a way that is over, it eclipses Venus when Venus and the moon are in aspect together. And this is because the moon is an enemy to Venus, according to Vedic astrology. Different astrology systems have different understandings of aspects. Really, in the Vedic system, trines and oppositions are all the same. Uh, what it counts is the friendship between the two planets. Since the moon is an enemy to Venus, we can see in this example that the moon's needs are going to eclipse Venus's ability to be fair in relationship. We're going to talk about it. But before we do, first thing I'd like to talk about, uh, I've been starting every video in this series with a little intro. So, <clears throat> in this intro, we're going to talk a bit about the symbolism of the sun, the moon, and Venus, to put them in context. If you've been watching my other series, my Sun Mars videos, uh, you would uh, you might have noticed I often refer to the Sun as the king. It's the king of the chart. It's our essential nature that comes from within ourselves, and it is the nature that we have to abide by in everything. So that's why it is important for the king to be the ruler of the king's kingdom, for all of us to be our autonomous spiritual selves. Like any good tree that gives of its fruits, it needs to be strong in its roots. That's how a kingdom is served well by its king being strong. That's why the sun, the king, is exalted in Aries. I digress. If the sun is considered the king and it's our essential nature, then the moon is the queen. What exactly do we mean by this? The moon is a crescent sliver of our sun's inner nature. It is our earthy subconscious whose sign, house, and aspects reveal the form that our sun energy has to subside through. So it's like, there's, it's, this is like, I often imagine it as a classic husband and wife dynamic that exists within us all. Uh, no matter what gender you identify as, everybody has a yin and a yang in the subconscious and the unconscious, the anima and the animus, which is essentially the yin and yang of the Ajna chakra. So this is to say that the sun in us is is this husband, it's the king, and the, the king is what he is, you know? But he is refined by his wife, the queen, who gives a rhythm and a healthy ceiling for the sun's, a realistic ceiling for the sun's potentials. So that the potentials in our sun can actually meet a realistic earth experience of life. That's why the moon is about adaptation. We have to adapt our sun nature to what we are given on planet earth. And what we are given on planet earth is the moon. Uh, so this is kind of like the wife of the sun who again gives a healthy ceiling for the sun's potentials, a realistic understanding of the self when the moon is working properly. So just like think about this, you know, it's like the sun inside of us has a nature and it wants to project it and beam it all the time. And so, you know, the husband says to the wife, 
hey, honey, you know what I'm really feeling right now? It's a big, delicious slice of blueberry pie. And the wife looks at him and says, but honey, you know what that does to your blood sugar? That is a realistic limit. And this is the nature of the king's body. Now, the king can ignore that and just eat the blueberry pie anyway, but it will suffer. It will not be in cohesion with its nature. That's why the moon is what we can realistically actually do with our solar sun energy. Without the moon, the person doesn't know what they actually want in life, who they actually are, what they want to be and build around themselves, right? If we didn't need, so the moon is like the, you know, it's the area around what we are and what we do. It's what we are. Uh, I, you know, I should say it's really what we want to become and what we want to build as our family, as our identity, as our self. And the sun is what we do with that. So the moon, it, you know, if we didn't need to eat, if we didn't need to sleep, if we didn't need to have sex and enjoy friendship, etc., then we could infinitely express the sun. But that's not the case. We need to eat. We need to sleep. The moon re relates to the latter end of the day. It's like when we, in, the, in noontime, in the afternoon, we're being our sun. But once it gets to the end of the day, it's time to be the moon. And this is like the partner we want to have, the family, the children that we want to, you know, have around us at the end of the day. And, you know, the fact is, is that we need to eat, we need to sleep, we need to have sex to a relative degree, a general, generally. It's our base, so the moon is our base personality that people meet the sun through. And if anybody wants to get into the king's personal quarters, they have to go through the queen, i.e. the moon. Venus is the sun's self-enjoyment style. Venus is how we express affection. It's the sun's on it, it's the sun's outgoing desire. But whatever Venus attracts is subject to the subconscious reaction complex of the moon. So, let's talk a little bit about what we can expect from Libra moon with Venus in Taurus, in the eighth house from the moon. Uh, this is a heavy aspect. Uh, I mean, you know, if the moon is earlier in Libra and Venus is later in Taurus, then this won't be as bad. But generally, this is going to have what we would call an aspect of the moon and Venus. And like I said, Western astrology considers that there's only trines and squares and that trines are good and that squares are bad. In Vedic astrology, it's about the relationships between the planets. This Venus is bound to lose its ability to really deeply understand and reciprocate what the partner wants. Or rather, they can understand what the partner wants, but there's still an instinct of emotional compulsion from the moon in Libra that is bound to overtake in a selfish way how the Venus can actually provide enjoyment for themselves as well as the other person. You're also blocking your own self-enjoyment of your own Venus through this combination. Uh, so how exactly is this working out? Well, the moon in Libra is a reflective, receptive person. The moon in Libra really wants to be needed for its ability to listen. You know, you probably are the type of person who like deeply enjoys and wants to secure a relationship through your ability to listen to your partner, uh, listening to their likes and their wants, their desires, their behaviors, their rhythms and routines, seeing what the person wants to do in the morning when they wake up, you know, and observing, you know, the, the moon in Libra observes like what kind of coffee mug the partner likes and whether they want coffee in the morning and the moon in Libra wants to be appreciated and needed for these things. Uh, 
it's a it's it's a deep way of them experiencing and securing their love with the other person and what often happens with the moon in libra you know this is a doubly kind of afflicted situation here uh anytime venus is in the eighth from the moon there's that heavy aspect which is difficult but already also the moon in libra is very close to its debilitation point in scorpio right the moon is debilitated in scorpio and as i always say debilitation and exaltation work by proximity not necessarily by sign so you're not out of the woods by being having the moon in libra you're still right next door to the debilitation in scorpio when the moon's debilitated in scorpio it's like selfish it can do things for other people but it does it at a practical way on a reactive instinct in order to willfully grab security and that does not exactly organic uh, conducive to an organic mutual development of growth and security that's why the moon does so well in taurus uh now when the moon is in libra we, you know we understand libra to be this receptive consciousness it want it, it's it's a social butterfly and it is listening to what the other people in the room want when the dog is scratching at the door the, and no one will notice it but the moon and venus person is just natural the moon and libra person just naturally goes and opens the door lets the dog out because the dog wants out uh and the moon in libra wants to let the dog out whenever it sees it in someone else's eyes oh you have a problem you have something that you need i want to be able to anticipate it that's what the moon in libra wants so it's this receptive person it's doing things for other people but why why is it doing these things for other people it's because the moon in libra needs to secure its in a way its codependency through this dynamic uh, especially when it's terribly afflicted it's already kind of leaning that way by being so close to scorpio but not necessarily you can still have a healthy moon in libra especially if it's being delighted by its friends the sun or mercury in particular uh or if it's got other benefic aspects that are helping it and supporting it you know like a trine from jupiter or something like that uh the moon will be well supported it will get its emotional needs taken care of outside the relationship and then those needs won't be so desperate towards the other partner but the moon in libra here typically will deeply need to be needed that's the best way to really say it it needs to be needed and so it wants to know all the things about the other person that they can do to cater and to serve and to show that they're listening and they'll even be a little bit of a, a doormat for people they kind of are proud at how much they can take for the other person at their own expense sometimes although if you have a healthy venus your venus will s make you enjoy your independence when it's healthy now venus and taurus thankfully the one aspect about this is that venus is in its own sign in taurus and that's helping this venus a lot venus here by its dignity it's in its own house and so it kind of knows what is healthy and independent for itself and its partner uh it knows the importance of you know there's a classic phrase that i often hear all the time is that absence makes the heart fonder and venus and taurus knows this venus and taurus is very good at having its own independent enjoyment and learning what it likes learning what it enjoys and what it is enjoyable to itself and i de for all other combinations usually venus and taurus can spend time alone and enjoy its time alone and then it will when it comes time to being alone or when it comes time to being with your partner it's fresh because you've got so much things that you did independently by yourself you want to share all the things that you got into and you're probably even while you're alone reading books or watching movies or romantic things or thinking of ideas of how you can enjoy more deeply your time with your partner 
Venus and Taurus generally kind of tends to abide by this and they can be independent, but their independence is what, what deeply serves the time that they have with their lover because really ultimately they're looking to have that time with their lover. But they're smart about it. They can know how to give their lover space while giving themselves space. Usually, usually. Um, this is a Venus that is fixed in its ways of enjoyment and it is predictable it's routine and it wants its lover to kind of ideally you know it'll enjoy these routine things because once you do something enough you get really good at it this is a venus this is a person who knows what they're good at and is and enjoys doing it so much that they get it to a high, <laughs> they, they bring the cream to the top with whatever it is that they're doing in life. That's a good thing for Venus, if and when this person gets to enjoy it. Unfortunately, when the moon is in Libra, you have such a compulsion to constantly try and pay attention to the other person, to serve the other person, to be at the service of the other person and to be needed by the other person that you are going to focus a lot of energy on just trying to cater to them to think about how you can serve them and <clears throat> it's an eighth house energy uh you know this venus is in the eighth house from the moon which is different from the actual eighth house you know you don't have the moon you don't necessarily have venus in the eighth house here but when Venus is in the eighth house from the moon, there is an aspect here. And what happens with that aspect, uh, especially with Vedic reckoning, this is like close enough to an opposition that this Venus is being damaged by the neediness of the moon. So what kind of happens is that you need a deep, delicious, engaging erotic experience with your partner that's kind of excessive you you seek to enjoy grounding your relationship with your partner through the stability of these things that you enjoy doing going on these little dates or these routine every week whatever sol solid emotional releases with your partner and it's so it's coming from the moon in Libra so in so deeply that it's almost like the desire for a meaningful experience takes away from just the simple simplicity of the nature of the experience Taurus and Venus Taurus usually gets it's they're easygoing usually but with the moon in Libra they are insecure they feel bad about their need to have they feel bad about their the venus and taurus's enjoyment in a big way of all the good things in life they're insecure about it because they feel that their over engaged need for enjoyment is getting in the way of the partner number one really they feel insecure because their enjoyment is getting in the way of the partner number two their enjoyment is very particular. It's kind of individual to them. Nobody is going to enjoy pushing to the heights of the cream of this particular fixed enjoyment that they get out of this and that, whether it's reading a book, watching a certain series of movies. They will be so into it and they'll be afraid that their partner isn't as into those things as they are. And to be fair, no one probably is. No one's probably as into anything that you do as you are, uh, which means at some level, you got to kind of reel that back a little bit. And at some level you do, although ultimately it's, this isn't necessarily Venus's fault. Uh, it's really the moon that is doing the obstruction here, which means that your addiction to your partner's enjoyment and trying to be a good 
receptive lover to your partner, the moon is going to overtake your Venus nature. That's what's going to happen, which means that you are going to listen to your partner and you're not going to give yourself the big enjoyment, the high peaks of deep depths of enjoyment of through whether it's sex or whether it's enjoyment of any activity you are not going to fully lay it out unless your venus has support if your venus is kind of supported by other people you also need some support for your moon because this moon is close to debilitation uh I mean, the, the Venus in Taurus is stable enough because it's an, in its own sign. You will get this enjoyment out, and that helps the situation. So you should enjoy what you love. Invite your partner to be a part of it. But just always keep in mind that your partner might find it exhausting if you, if <laughs> the need to serve is stronger than the service itself. If your need to be pleasurable to your partner is unrealistic and almost like a, tr a, tr a task that you both have to do it's like you know you roll your sleeves up and it's like baby i'm t i've i've got a hotel booked for us and we're gonna get champagne and i'm sp i'm fronting the bill honey so don't worry about it even though your finances are probably going to be shared at some level with your partner this is the eighth house you're throwing, wanting to throw money at big time enjoyments f with your partner, catering though to your partner's need because it's the moon in Libra. You want to ultimately, it's all for the service of securing your relationship with your partner, which will frustrate the actual enjoyment of the act itself. Really, when it comes to this kind of thing, the only way to get past it is to detach from your own emotional neediness. Keep applying the enjoyment of the Venus things that you have, but be realistic about how often you need to have these little excursions with your partner and actually communicate with them and ask them, how much do you really enjoy doing these things? Because they're, your partner's going to sense that you have emotional needs that need to be catered to in this way. And they're going to say, no, I, I enjoy it, baby. I enjoy it. And you're going to say, okay. But do, And when your partner says, okay, they might just be trying to not offend the fact that you, this is a basic need of yours so it's like okay honey let's go to the hotel we'll drink the champagne we'll we'll spend a bit of money we'll have a little bit of a good time your partner will and should give you that just make sure that you are not suffocating them with the need to feel like they appreciate it or the need to feel valued and secured through this because it can get gross it can get excessive uh you know enjoy that through venus a as the act itself and don't get addicted to the need to serve your partner in this way because your partner might not enjoy these things as much as you do and you should also not let go of the things that you deeply enjoy by trying to cater to your partner that's the two-way side to this thing that I would kind of put it out there. Now I could talk about it forever, but ultimately now I want to start moving towards talking about the erotic nature of this combination. What are the specifics of how this would work out? First, we're going to talk about the erotic nature of the moon in Libra. It's coming from Erotic Astrology by Phyllis Vega. For the moon in Libra, your approach to lovemaking is glamorous, and alluring. You appreciate the intricate rituals of old-fashioned courtship, and you enjoy being wooed with finesse and sophistication. The double Venus emphasis here, probably it shows that you're deeply looking for your partner to put in a lot of effort. It's, it's the love that they show and the dedication that they show, and also them learning about what everybody enjoys. There even, could even be a monetary aspect, you know, where the amount of money that they put into your enjoyment can reflect on the sacrifice that they've made towards you. Although it's you are, as a Venus and Taurus, you are going to know how much money they make and how much of a sacrifice spending that much money on you was. And this is the, the materialistic nature of this is not necessarily perverse, uh, so long as 
it is a realistic gate in a in a stable gate to your partner's affection for you and that your as so long as your moon in libra doesn't get over insecure overly insecure and ask too much of, of the enjoyment of your partner's dedication in this way sex and romance are intertwined in your mind and you probably as moon and libra you probably prefer artful seduction to a carnal free-for-all mind you the venus and taurus in you could probably rock and roll for a long go and deeply enjoy it that's again you should enjoy that but ultimately like i mean you, you should you should allow yourself to do that and don't let the moon in libra obstruct the nature of this deep enjoyment that you have communicate with your lover and you can make a great lover because moon in libra listens to the other person but also deeply knows how everybody likes to fuck deep long and hard you're probably somebody who reads books about about it and tries to bring the cream to the top rock and roll but do it within like you know like where most people are 50 push it up to 70 once in a while and then let it coast and then push it up to 70 or 80 and then coast don't try to bring it up to 100 all the time just because you feel like that will be a valuable thing that will make you more secure with your lover because your lover will see the extraneous symbol of external sex and all these things and it will obscure the simple simplicity of the sentiment that was really supposed to be conveyed there <clears throat> your erotic sensuality emerges most readily in a sumptuous setting that engages all the senses luxurious bedding sultry nightwear flickering candles and fresh flowers add the requisite spice to your lovemaking a special night dedicated to love in a romantic setting with moonlight and whispered words of adoration serves as a genuine turn on and affectionate gestures and loving words draw out your passions and get your sexual juices flowing it's not necessarily to say that you know this is going to be how your love making is going to be because venus and taurus is pretty balls to the wall at some level um but it's the gesture the consciousness around that the venus and taurus lovemaking is going to be built slowly on romantic gestures on that walk you're walking down the beach and you're looking at the stars and you're talking all about the person you know what do you want to be when you grew up you know like did you expect you'd be here at age 32 you know like those kind of conversations like oh you know what is it like what does it all mean what does it mean to you that kind of romantic long walks on the beach type consciousness is going to be the center of your attraction nature and your desire nature uh and it's going to be the arena through which you meet the people and enjoy the people and get turned on and there's going to be elements of this surrounding your love making no matter what <sighs> so that was the moon in libra generally now what is it like when we read about the moon in libra with venus in taurus in that eighth house again this is coming from erotic astrology by phyllis vega this is moon in libra venus in taurus you know before i even say it i do want to say that the eighth house nature as a psychological discovery factor is relating to kind of scorpio so this venus being well placed can learn a lot about its own psychological complexes and even about the partner's psychological complexes uh but again the desire to fully flesh this out uh and even to do it in a way that you can learn the kinks and deep passions of each other uh if you're doing this from again your desire to firm up your security with your partner or with yourself in general the nature of the 
the self, you know, there can be a selfish intent here where you're just trying to abide by your own self discovery. So you're here enjoying the self discovery of your lovemaking and trying to do it in all different ways for yourself. And your partner's just here, just like getting exhausted, just like, you know, like, haven't we found it yet? <laughs> haven't we found the rhythm that we're looking to have? You know, I mean, Venus and Taurus is predictable and simple, but they will push to go deeper and longer and engage more and see how they can push themselves to their edges. And it's important that you keep in mind that your partner might not enjoy being pushed to that edge instinct in the same way that you do so moon in libra venus and taurus a genuine romantic nothing makes you happier than being alone with your partner in a paradise of your own making the idealistic moon in libra in you craves a lover that you can put on a pedestal and worship however Earthy, sensual Venus and Taurus wants a real-life mate to share your most intimate moments. The Venus and Taurus wants a buddy in, a, in some levels, somebody who they can laugh with, and somebody who can they can kind of like... Even Venus and Taurus likes to be able to be... to share mutual cynicism and bitterness about the bad things in life, and even to speak critically and truly to important frustrating things in the relationship again you might be somebody who is very set in your ways about your comforts and enjoyments the moon in libra will make you ignore your own rather critical needs your own very specific unique preferences and desires and things and you know there could be something as simple as like your lover will cut you off in conversation and the moon in libra will be subservient to the partner in order to have that almost like an eighth house pure energy building up all the time uh of the venus like you enjoy being on the good side of your partner so much that you won't mention when they do those things that frustrate you and because you're afraid that if you do the moon is afraid that you're you're insecure and that you're afraid that you'll do something to ruin the, the partnership and the relationship by speaking your truth and that's that shouldn't be you should be able to speak your truth no matter what it is and still be able to go about doing your thing so you want this sort of partner you want to worship the pedal the, the the ground that they walk on through the moon in libra but you don't want that to get in the way of you being sarcastic to them when you can be and should be or being just like funny venus and taurus is so funny and the moon in libra here will instinctively stop you from being objective and funny and saying something clever if you think that it'll put the relationship emotionally at risk and maybe it will it's because of the nature of how you approached it from with your moon from the beginning so keep that in mind in the bedroom this person Wants, responds most readily to an elegant style of lovemaking that builds slowly towards the peak of desire. And that, you know, finding that edge of keeping your partner up at a delicious peak as much as they can without making them, like, exhausted is your magical MO. It is your modus operandum for your finding the dividing lines between insecurity and security that you probably experience in waves in your relationship. It's the nature of what it is. If your moon is not afflicted, and if your Venus is not afflicted, if it has support, you will find a partner who can go through these waves with you and you ultimately won't feel that insecure. Especially after you hang, if you got a decent Saturn close to the seventh house, you're gonna find somebody who you grip for reasons outside of this emotional fluctuation that you have and this it'll whatever everything i've just described will be what it is but you won't feel too bad about it because you are secure in your relationship for reasons outside of this dynamic which is very important for this dynamic i hope you dig that 
So this has been a long video, but it is what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm Dustin Cormier for How to Rock Astrology. Let me know in the comments if I hit this on the head. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think, and I hope you guys dug it. I'll see you guys in the next episode of whatever I end up doing. Thanks for watching.